What's up, everybody? I hope you guys enjoyed the the little bit of hot cocks that we had going on there while we waited for this game. I'm uh, I'm a little disappointed that I'm going to be missing listening to that podcast. But what's even better, we've got actually a pretty good game here for the PGL North American Qualifier, the opening game. We've got VG Storm, VGJ Storm, excuse me, versus Immortals. I would say two teams that have been kind of untested so far in the uh, in the various NA qualifiers that are going on right now. Both could be a top contender for that that kind of uh, I guess second place slot behind EG, who are just by the mere presence of them being EG and not having to go through qualifiers are currently taking that first place slot. Everyone's kind of vying for that second place slot, and it's been that way for quite some time. And uh, I think both VGJ Storm and Immortals are um, two teams that have the potential to take that spot from uh, some of the other teams in this qualifier, and they're matching up against each other in the very first round. So this should be a, a pretty fun opening game, especially since it is the old MVP Phoenix, after all. All their games are fun. Uh, I've got Draskal with me. Draskal, I uh, very much enjoyed casting uh, TI with you for the group stage. I think we had a lot of fun, so I'm glad uh, we were able to bring this duo back. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I enjoyed it. It was kind of funny because I think we both went to TI like not having really... Most people probably know this by now, but they don't really tell us what we're doing. They're just kind of like, yeah, you're coming to TI. <laughs> and then they're just like, oh, hey, this is who you're casting with. Enjoy. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, whatever. We hadn't casted much ever? prior to that. So. I don't think we've ever yeah. casted before that. Mm. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. Like, now despite all the, the, like, the, the, say, like, the Bucharest qualifiers where we all got together in the studio and stuff, like, I think somehow we always ended up on different regions, no matter what hub we did. So I don't think we ever cast it together. Yeah, I think I think we did a good job though. I think yeah. people were a little bit jelly, you know. Let's, oh, let's yeah, keep definitely. making them jealous. Yeah, I I agree. Have you uh, speaking of, of fun, have you been enjoying all the lich in your in your various uh, in, in you know, your various pubs? He's the one hero in Dota where I don't want him on my team and I don't want him on the other team. Yeah, same here. I just here. don't want him. I don't want him in the game, Cap. I want him away from my games. Dude. Just don't be on my team. Don't be against me. See, this is why we made such a good good duo. You and me, we're on the same track. We're on the same mind track, Draskal. Because somebody asked me yesterday, I was like, if you could remove one hero from the game, what would it be? And it wasn't Techies. It was Lich. Because I, I think that hero is just... Like, the concept is so dumb just being able to sacrifice a creep and throw ice armor it's like annoying for everybody in the game including the person playing it at least techies you know the person playing techies is getting some sort of sadistic enjoyment out of playing it and ruining other people's times but like the the lich player he also hates playing lich yeah i i also think that lich is one of those heroes where you're not a good lich player like, no one, you, there's no skill ceiling on that hero where you get there and you're just like, oh man, I'm so good at this hero. No. You sit in the lane, you sacrifice creeps, you armor people, and you randomly chain frost. A lot of the time in games now, when I play, I see people just chain frost the wave to push it out now. They don't yep. even care about using it on enemy heroes. They just chain frost the wave. I'm like, wow, I really feel like I'm being outskilled here. You know, that's the only time there's that brief, like, glimmer. It's not even real enjoyment. It's, like, kind of like this false hope of enjoyment is where you're playing the Lich and you get level 6 before other people. And you're like, I I have a second ability now. Like, I have this other thing that I can use. I, I can use Chain Frost. And then you go and cast it and it doesn't actually bounce the way you wanted to. Or, it, it like, in other situations, there's just impossible for you to be able to get good bounces. Because uh, the enemies just, you know, split apart and... And that's and then that's it. You thought you were gonna enjoy that. You threw it out there. It didn't actually kill anything. And then you're just back to being sad and casting uh, a lich armor on people. Yeah, I could I could go on for like hours about how annoying I think that hero is just like conceptually and in, in, in gameplay. But the interesting thing to me, um, VTJ Storm picking up the Doom second. I know we've seen like a little bit of a resurgence of this hero. I think he definitely has a place. And there was a time not too long ago, where this Lich Doom was just the lane, right? When they originally buffed Scorched Earth, and it was, like, impossible to kill the Doom because he had ice armor, and he would just get a, a crap ton of farm and just be, like, that frontline hero for your team. So we could be seeing a, a bit of a return of that here coming in from BGJ Storm. 
Yeah, I think that it's like one of the most natural synergies out there in the game because Lich classically has been sort of a dual lane hero, even though right now we're seeing him more often as like safe lane and sometimes sort of tri-lane situations. But like classically, he's been a dual lane hero because he brings a lane back, usually for the off lane. And then you've got this Doom who has no armor naturally, but does have a lot of HP. And once you're able to give him that armor, he actually just becomes an unstoppable beast between the, the base HP that he has, plus the region of Scorched Earth. But we do have another really good synergy on Immortals, right? We've got this Wisp Death Prophet duo, where you're going to have both the heals and damage protection over the Death Prophet while she's Spirit Siphoning, and also while she's got the ghosts out and stuff. Like, this is one of those potential duos where you make one hero just kind of unstoppable uh, and kind of immortal, and that hero just wrecks, in this case, all your objectives with uh with the pushes that are going to be happening i would even go as far as to say the second phase bans for both teams actually favor immortals draft i find sven and you know necrophos obviously he was in the first phase but even alk to a certain degree they're all pretty good against death prophet because they naturally build in a tankiness obviously necrophos can just kill the death prophet at a certain percentage barring like glimmer capes and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. I'm really kind of liking the, the the opening from Immortals, especially since I know that they are comfortable with Wisp. We're basically looking at TI6 MVP Phoenix right now. And I think that this is the kind of team that's going to constantly, like, run at you. And with a Lich, Doom, and a Nyx Assassin, there's not really a whole lot of wave clear on BGJ. They're relying, I think, pretty heavily on the Lich just tilting the lanes right now into their favor and getting an advantage that way. Because even during the mid-game, these heroes, sure, they deal a little bit of damage, but there's not much control outside of a Nyx stun, and I guess Doom is technically controlled because you can't cast, but there's no real, like, scary lockdown for me right now and no real team fight. Yeah, uh, the one thing I, I do like about the Nyx Assassin is the fact that I would have been even more pessimistic about VGJ Storm if they had a four position that was like one of those classic mid gankers, you know, like Spirit Breaker or Spirit, one of those heroes that, you know, is supposed to <laughs> just through the laning phase is supposed to be a hero that gets kills on the mid lane and wins that mid lane matchup. But this is a this is a duo that if the Wisp is mid, it's not going to happen, right? Like it doesn't matter what hero. Uh, is actually going to be going mid. You can't actually kill the Death Prophet if she's got Spirit Siphon and a Wisp behind her. Um, so that is one thing Immortals can do, is win their laning phase through uh, some rotations of a strong 4 position. Um, Earth Spirit's banned away, so they're going to go for the Spirit Breaker. Five seconds remaining. The SP is just classic. Like, even before Spirit Breaker kind of made his entrance into the competitive scene in a big way, I think that you know old MVP Phoenix, new Immortals, they were the kind of team that always liked to run at least one hero that could guarantee lane pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really suits their style. But V2J Storm are just kind of sticking with more of the same. They have a, a team that's like pretty good at small skirmishes. Visage is a very high damage hero. I think he is borderline broken, to be honest, with the way that they change Gravekeeper's Cloak to affect uh, the birds if you're nearby. Because yeah. you just can't kill him now, unless they're separated from the Visage. It's honestly one of the best buffs I think he's had in ages. And a Monkey King. So we're going to have a safe lane Monkey King, it looks like, for Immortals. Uh, this has been one of the many safe laners that has been kind of the bane of an off laner's existence. The It's like Ursa, Lifestealer, and then Monkey King is the combination of both, right? Where it's like, he's got the Ursa advantage where if he hits you a couple times, you just have to stay out of lane until that debuff goes away. And then if he does get the completed debuff, then he gets this crazy amount of lifesteal where you can't actually man fight him. So in that regard, he's like a lifestealer with open wounds. It's like the, the this weird combination of an offlaner's worst nightmare. So I wish the, the best of luck to VGJ Storm. Fortunately, they do have a very strong duo. Uh, and that is the key word duo there. If they run this Lich Doom into the Monkey King... By himself, I don't think he'll be able to stand up against that. I think Doom's Infernal Blade and that constant harassment every single time you go to the creep wave, he bangs one on you. I think that that's too much. So I don't know what Immortals are going to do to secure that safe lane more. Maybe they're going to keep the Wisp on him and just have the Death Prophet solo up mid. Yeah, I guess it's a, it's a really good point you bring up about the Doom versus... I guess it's a pseudo melee. Like, Monkey King isn't pure melee, but it's close enough to where, yeah, what you said can definitely happen. You can get hit by the Infernal Blade quite often. I think that the answer that they're going to have, though, is they're just going to kill the lane. Like, if it's Lich and Doom down there, if it's, like, level 1, you just tether the Monkey King, he gets, like, level 1 uh, Jingu, and you just die if he has an Arbor Venom. You can't run away. Tether speed plus orb, you're just a goner. Yeah, that's true. I guess the movement speed of the tether would kind of outdo the um, the movement speed slow of Lich armor. 
right? Yeah, so I think the first few levels are going to be. That's going to make or break the safe lane, I think, for Immortals, is like the first two or three levels. If they can get kills, I think they'll be fine. But if they don't mess with the lane at all, and the, the Lich and the Doom are just allowed to kind of exist in there, then I think that it could be uh, really problematic for them. But they don't have a stun between their two off lanes either against a Spirit Breaker. So I'm kind of wondering, is the Wisp going to be enough to bring the lane into their favor? Or is they, are they going to take oh, another path here? Is they going to take a Jakiro? Interesting. <laughs> I was watching uh, Ice 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 stream yesterday, and he had somebody, I don't know, maybe it was Velo or somebody, and he was playing off lane, and uh, and this was in a pub, and he played off lane Jakiro, and I was he like, plays okay. everything, dude. I was like, I'm trying to keep an open mind here, you know. Like I I studied Ice Ice Ice's off lane Winter Wyvern, so I might as well give some other off laner a chance in their their quirky pickup, but. Um, th this is definitely one of those cores that if you have a successful phase where you can just tank down all the towers across the map, especially in combination with a team fight lineup, which Immortals already has between Death Prophet and Monkey King. Yeah, I think if VGJ Storm get behind it all, though, they're just going to immediately lose the game. Like, their, their lineup cannot play from behind. They have no wave clear at all. Not a single one of their heroes hits creeps. Yeah. So if they lose the lanes, oh, it's going to be rough. What what do you kind of do to make up for that fact with your last pick? Is there some sort of carry that gives you enough wave clear to sort of cover that weakness? I guess we're gonna find out. Okay, they're gonna okay. So they just don't care about killing creeps at all, Cap. The answer is if you can't kill creeps, don't last pick something that can kill creeps. Just fight them. That's that's all they want to do. They want to win the lanes, and they're just gonna I guess go for the these skirmish plays and. Sure, Immortals don't have a tremendous amount of lockdown for the Weaver, that's very true. But my god, if they if they just lose the lanes, this game is going to be so hard against SB, Relocate. You're going to have Death Prophet ulti on top of that with Shakira's ability to push towers. Oh, I, I gotta say, like, I'm enjoying what Immortals are bringing here. It's not as if VTJ can't win, it's just first 10-15 minutes are going to be very, very important for them. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a, I would say this is a conflict of styles here. You know, where VGJ is very much focused on killing heroes and winning that laning phase and going from there. And Immortals definitely have the, the much better five-man lineup that leads into objectives. And this is this is a, a lineup that is classically known for being super aggressive and being very fast at taking objectives and forcing you on the back foot. In fact, I, I was in a, a game with Frev the other day and he picked up Slardar and... Slardar offlane. I was like, whoa, is I was like, is that good again? I was I don't think that's a good hero really for offlane. He's like, it's not, but I have to play the MVP style. You know, and that that kind of <laughs> says everything, right? Like he I has have to, to have play... a Slardar, you know? Yeah, he has to have a hero that goes in so QO can follow it, you know? Like that's what MVP Phoenix has always been about. So uh MVP uh Phoenix now immortals are gonna have to get back on the groove and see whether or not this lineup is gonna be able to do it for them because they've already suffered one loss so far i think it was in the star ladder and north american qualifiers they lost to uh ppd's the dire stack um while vgg vg j storm they've had uh, a modicum of success um i think they've actually beaten dire in the star ladder qualifiers but i know they're out of the king's cup now um they okay. lost that pretty badly. I, I guess so. my my biggest question is, like, both of these teams are relatively new, but we also know that Immortals had experience playing with each other in the past. So, like, how much is that going to come into play? Have they really gotten kind of back in their comfort zone with each other yet? Or do you think it's not quite there yet? I guess we'll find out this game. Yeah, I mean, I only watched a little bit of that one Immortals game, um, and it definitely did not seem like... Um, I, I think strategy-wise, it kind of lost them the game uh, more so than anything. I thought their quick, uh, their picks were pretty questionable. They definitely played a bit greedy. Um, meanwhile, like, I, I think this team, VGJ Storm, maybe not as a full team, has figured out all the quirks and stuff. But as pub players, right, they definitely have a lot of experience. You've got, you know, Francis with Stan King and Snake King. Like, the, those, guys, those guys have definitely played, uh, some of them with on, on teams together. Um, and if not, just pubs constantly. And, of course, Ritsu and 747, they have uh, quite a history as well. Yeah, I think the, the comfortability factor is really important in these types of games, especially if you have a draft like BGJ. They need to coordinate and play super well during the early game. 
I think that the Lich Doom Lane almost to a degree plays itself, depending on what the lane matchup is. Mm -hmm. But the other the other problem is too is we we spoke about like the lack of wave clear once DPLT is up. Man, they are just gonna walk at buildings, and if they if they aren't like there to cut them off before the siege starts, walking into that team is is so difficult. So what do you think about this switch up here where uh, Immortals are running the Death Prophet at top against the, the Lich Doom and then uh, they're putting the Monkey King against the core Visage mid? I think honestly it's probably a better matchup. I mean the Monkey King's not going to have a super great time, but I think the Death Prophet would probably just die eventually, right? Because what yeah. if the Visage hits six first and one hero comes mid, you're just dead. Looks like a dual lane though. So it's going to be the the IO and the Monkey King. This should do more than okay. He's starting with the poor man shield on QO. I don't really think the Visage is going to be able to do much harass. But they're putting a lot of emphasis, I guess, on uh, 747 getting like that optimal start here, which makes sense. Core Visage is a, an absolute beast if he gets a good start. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I think I've seen that matchup before, the Death Prophet versus Visage. And as Death Prophet, you don't actually feel like Spirit Siphon is useful at all just because the Visage is so far back in lane. And then when he goes on you, he has a huge movement speed advantage. So he kind of goes on you, you turn and pop Spirit Siphon, and he can just run out of it real quickly if he wants to. Yeah, this lane is looking a little bit shaky top, though. I don't think that Dubu is going to be able to really do anything to either the Doom or the Nyx. This is, I guess, one of the other issues, I suppose, that the Immortals are going to have to deal with. They can't kill these heroes with this lane combination, right? So the, the SB is supposed to apply like this lane pressure. And the, the main reason I feel like you pick him a lot of the time is just so you can find a, a kill on one lane. But I don't really see the kill. Like, I guess he could potentially go mid if the Lich is ever really far out of position, but it's hard to charge across the map like that and not be noticed. Yeah, so instead, he's not even trying to lane so far. He goes and stacks the easy camp, goes for the pull, but uh, VGJ Storm is doing a great job of intercepting a lot of that farm, and Dubu's not going to get that fast level 2 that he was hoping for. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they do have the uh, the 1v1, uh, Ritsu versus Ferev. Ferev, the Jakiro is... Uh, Picking up boots, looks like he is going to be probably going for that 404 build, um, which I imagine is good, probably going to be pretty effective in a 1v1 against any hero. But uh, I, I'm presuming Weaver is pretty susceptible to this magic damage harassment. Yeah, he does a huge amount of damage. Shakira's stats are also insane. He has 31 strength <laughs> with just one branch. He, yeah. he has like some of the highest stats of any kind of supporty role most of the time. Obviously, in this case, he's going to be more of a core, but I think people kind of forgot like how strong that hero is in a 1v1. He does some of the highest damage, and he's very hard to trade against because both of his abilities, like the, the dual breath and the liquid fire, they both slow attack speed. You can see the bugs go out, and that's the only time that the Weaver can really do anything against the Jakiro, but he quickly backs up, takes with the bug. Meanwhile, top lane, uh-oh, MP. He's going to be crowded out here in the jungle. They're trying to block him in as much as possible, but it looks like he will manage to get the distance away. Damage is done, though. Dubu does manage to get a fortuitous bash on Nyx's assassin, pushing him away. And looks like uh, another Spirit Siphon is coming up, so they will actually be in fighting shape if they want to, but they're going to go for the charge uh, down to... Uh, is that bottom? Yeah, he's going to bottom instead, yeah. so they're going to keep uh, an eye on the Weaver. This is a bad, pretty good idea, because Ferev... He's going to be able to see the Weaver inside the trees, and he's already dropping so low with his damage over time. By the time the Spirit Breaker gets here, this just might be a kill behind the tower. He picks up his Ring of Health, and that's going to help him get something, but surely they're going to go for a dive behind this tower. Ritsu doesn't have the Shikuchi up just yet. They're going to get some more damage, and will manage nice. to finish him off with the swing. Dubu is the one to claim the first blood. That fade time, dude. It's always a killer. I think everyone plays Weaver and has that one death where you're like almost getting away, but not quite. One animation hits you and you're just the saddest bug in the world. This lane is a super, super struggle for him now. Like, Forever's pulling ahead a lot in terms of just overall CS. He wasn't even able to trade before. Now he's almost two levels behind. Well, I guess more like one level. But yeah, this is looking a little bit rough in the bottom lane here. And this goes back to what we sort of set up this whole entire strategy is that we can't really afford for VGJ to have a bad laning phase. Like for me, when I look at top lane and I see MP kind of being pushed out, he doesn't have a whole lot of CS. I, I don't feel bad, you know, because I know he's going to make the recovery later. It's just what Death Prophet can do with a lot of wave clear and being able to take objectives. But when I see a Weaver having some issues, like that's a hero that could definitely just do nothing for most of the game. They are going to be able to get the Wisp Heal onto Forev just in time, and Ritsu is probably going to die Ritsu. again. 
Yeah. I mean, what do they really do to counteract this, though? That's the real question. Is the Nyx going to stop, like, a, a Spirit Breaker gank like that? I suppose he can impale and, like, hope for the best. But there's no guarantee that he even lives in that situation. And I don't think they even had Dust. No, they just killed him. Like, they're, yeah. they're not even bringing Dust to these ganks. They're just straight up killing him. So it's not even, like, they're not investing any money to kill this Weaver. Yeah, he just got lulled into that false sense of security where he had the Jakira low with the bug on him and thought Radiance maybe he could go on him, but attack. that early levels of uh, Shikuchi definitely leaves a, a wide opening. They are going to go into MP again at the top lane. Doesn't have any mana for the Spirit Siphon, Radiance so they should be able to run him down, which is why Forev needs to provide a TP here and let MP get back to the trees. They're going to be able to get the slow onto the Doom, and this damage over time is going to quickly counteract the Scorched Earth, and they're going to bring him down. So great counter rotation there from Forev. Stopping the dive on MP. Yeah, really happy to see him TP across the map like that at such an early stage in the game, just to make sure that no one else is... They, I guess they understand very much so what VTJ Storm wants to do and getting ahead in the laning phase. And the Doom is still farming very well. You got 747 in mid lane. He's got some pretty decent CS. Got the Medallion of Courage up already. But like you mentioned, even if the Death Prophet's behind in CS, she's going to get Exorcism, and she's going to walk at a tower with Shakiro and... There's no contest. Like, BGG and Storm have to fight before they, that stage happens, you know? They need to be there before the siege is started. Most of the time, I, I like to focus on the mid lane just because it used to be such an interesting 1v1 aspect. But since it's been a, a Lich 2v2, a Lich versus Wisp, essentially, I don't think there's any, really anything that's ever going to happen in this mid lane until level six. So it's pretty much just a CS war and it does look like the Monkey King is coming out ahead 42 and nine while the uh, the Visage is 33 and five. It's kind of surprising that there's that big of a CS discrepancy. Top lane, considering... he's gonna be able to get the stun onto Forev to turn around Nuke from the Doom. But again, the Wisp is gonna be able to come in just in time. Fabi provides the heals and they know this is a fight that is over. VGJ Storm, they just hope to be able to get the Nyx Assassin out, but he's not gonna make it out. The stun is there to be able to stop him. Meanwhile, Ritsu did actually make a rotation into mid lane. I lied. We are going to have someone go down pre-level 6. That's the Monkey King. Probably wasn't expecting a Weaver rotation, but what can he do? He's having a rough laning phase, so he had to make something else happen. Yeah, a movement like that is something that you don't really get out of a lot of other cores, but Weaver still has a ton of mobility, and even at level 1, Swarm is crazy strong. Throw it on somebody, they can't really fog juke you. Very easy to tower dive because of your speed. You still do a good amount of damage. It was a nice rotation for sure. It doesn't really, I guess it doesn't really change like the pace of the early game at all for either team, but it's always kind of like that silver lining. They are having a charge onto the Weaver here, but he just picked up his level six, but he doesn't actually have the mana for it. It was that last Shikuchi. Then again, they actually have no counter vision to follow him anyway. So it looks like this is just gonna be an early push from Immortals. If they did it a kill from it, it would have been fantastic, but Instead, it'll just be probably an eight-minute tier one tower falling. Yeah, they're bringing more numbers down here as well. They realize that they kind of... It's very hard for them to defend, but at the same time, it feels bad to just let your towers die to Jakiro because he's not really investing anything to get those towers, right? He's not using mana or anything. It's just liquid fire spam, dead tower. Oh, they found the Nyx Assassin, right? He was crossing up. Goodbye. And that is what they're going to blow the Exorcism. As soon as I saw the Lich, I was like, well, what if you just blow Exorcism just to overwhelm the tower anyway? But MP is going to take a different idea to it, a different approach, and he's going to move to mid and go where the Lich is not. This is really good. Yeah, th this is a super good idea because they know Forrest is going to get the tower on his own. VTJ don't want to go down there and try to contest. They're already mid, so he pops the ult, knows he's going to get some guaranteed damage on a tier 1. And the Jakiro can just TP because the rest of his team walked mid. This is a very nice coordination coming in from Immortals. Weaver's going to come in, throws out the bugs. And Febby is probably number one target here as he's already quite low and is healing up. The Death Prophet, they are going to be able to get that one kill. Chain Frost goes out, MP drops low. They're going to throw the Doom on him as well. Still had some Spirit Siphon, but it looks like he should be taken down here. Nice stun. The Nyx Assassin comes in big with a two-man stun, allowing 747 to be able to follow up with the Visage. Monkey King managed to get a counter kill there with the Life Steal, but it's not enough for him to survive. Wiss is back into play now and will help out Dubu to escape back to the Tier 2 Tower. But this is finally VGJ Storm finding a win in this game one. Yeah, they need these fights. If they're not winning these skirmishes when they commit Doom, when they have like the Visage Birds up online, 
then the game would just look almost over at this point. But yeah, a very big breath of life coming in for them. I think the biggest thing is when you walk into an engagement like that, and the, the Monkey King at this point, Kyo hasn't skilled ulti. I think ulti is crazy value against their team. It gives you the bonus armor when you're standing inside of it. And I guess he gets it at seven. So I'm not sure if that was like a, a miss skill or whatever, but might have actually done a ton of work there considering the dive that happened from BTJ Storm. Yeah, I would agree. I've seen far too many times that armor has managed to save a life. Dubu trying to run back there after a uh, oh bad God. charge there, and they're just going to be able to run him over. Again, the Doom of the Infernal Blade, and now they're going to be able to Another. catch Vebi as well. Nice catch. They get both supports down from Immortals, and their early five, man, it looked good, right? You talked about how that rotation was very smart from them, but as they start getting into a full team fight aspect, it begins to turn against Immortals, and they may have to take a break from some of these uh, some of these fights as they're just losing every single one of them. Yeah, they're playing the armor game on the side of EGJ. I actually quite like the idea of having the Lich and the Visage on the same team. So you have this idea of buying a Solar Crest on any hero, right? But it's a core Visage, so he's going to buy it first. And then you have Lich armor on top of that, which means any physical damage output hero, which is like Death Prophet to some degree in this case, and obviously the Monkey King, they're going to have a lot harder of a time focusing that one hero down. But if you look at Io, Monkey King's base armor is like super low. Even the Spirit Breaker kind of fell over with just the damage. Like, look at Dubu, man. He's just dead. There's, there's nothing he can do. Nice catch again from Flea. The Nyx Assassin now gets his level 6. And he can start being a menace around the map. MP is going to pop his next Exorcism. But he doesn't have any backup, so as long as just one extra hero shows up, they're going to be able to deal with MP, push him back, or maybe even kill him. They're going to try and run him down here. They do have the Wisp coming in, and he does have some assistance from the Monkey King. They're going to throw out the Chain Frost. It's bouncing on the MP. He's just throwing it next to the Siege Wagon and is going to go down because of it, but at least it doesn't bounce to his allies. Uh, Kiwo does have his ultimate out, but now he's going to be doomed up, so he's just going to have to stay inside of here, but it's just going to be a bad fight for him. He might be able to kill. Oh, the Doom barely managed to get out of there, and now he should just be food for the Weaver. As long as he doesn't get his lifesteal proc, he's just going to tick down. And another great fight. Oh, maybe the turnaround. The Doom actually fades away. He gets off the stun, but it's still not enough. Oh. A last I'm right click from Ritsu. Yeah, that was super close. So I guess the, the biggest issue right now like obviously dubu wasn't there he died mid a little bit before i think he respawned but he tp'd somewhere else so he wasn't able to be at the engagement and he's still not six i think he was looking for kind of that little bit of experience so he can get the the nether strike because that's going to help a lot you're going to be able to take the doom off of someone if he's chasing with like the scorched earth on you're going to be able to kill the weaver a lot easier because right now they they can't get like the single target focus good enough to find that kill. And BTJ Storm are just running at them because they realize this is how we win the game. We just need to keep going. Francis sets up for another kill onto Ferev. He may have gotten the tower, but he'll lose his life or not. Oh Febby comes alive. in again with the heal. It's just the attack speed slow. It was too much. Now Febby actually steps a little bit too far forward and Francis does manage to punish him with another great impale. And VGJ Storm it's kind of an interesting approach, right? We talked about how they had no wave clear whatsoever, but they're kind of making up for that in the fact that they're just moving around the map so fast. They're like, any time that a hero shows up from Immortals, they're just running heroes at it before it can actually get that big advantage of being able to push down towers and start getting the creep wave deeper and deeper onto the Radiant side. Yeah, it's, it's a, a very strong way of playing these types of heroes because they're actually... If you, if you have like the Doom on the front line with the Frost Armor, and then you have the Visage who is, he's not actually going for the full crest, he went back for the Midas and is eventually going to go for the Agonims. Um, th this kind of like tanky front line style where you can do that and like have a Weaver in the back and just hitting people, I believe is very difficult to deal with because they don't have the control. I really think that they were looking for getting more towers earlier on in the game on the side of Mortals before this kind of fighting broke out and I'm going to see an engage here. They're going to be able to bring down the Doom very quickly, but the Chain Frost is going to bounce over, and it does manage to latch on the Monkey King. It bounces over between Dubu and MP. Oh, no. It's so much damage done, and maybe they could follow it up. Oh, the Nyx God, Assassin no. is still destined. Oh. <laughs> Where's the MVP the coordination about, that we talked about? Forever is going to be caught here. Threw it onto the Nyx Assassin. Actually gets himself Spike Carapace as a result. Stunned up, and it's easy follow-up for 747's Visage. And those birds are so difficult to bring down when it's next to the Visage. 
QO doesn't even try. All the meanwhile, they did manage to pick up that top tower. Ritsu has taken it, and now he's TP to this bottom tier two tower to join his team in the fight. And they're going to be able to maybe bring the Monkey King down very quickly, or maybe MP. They actually make the initiation on both of them at once. They need to focus just one down. They're going to go for MP while the Doom is thrown out. Febby, he's not going to be making it out of here alive, but it looks like QO will make the tree TP out. So they only lose two there for Immortals. But I, I don't know how you feel about it, Drasko, but I really feel like they can't keep just throwing heroes at these objectives and expecting the, the team fight to just work out for them. It seems pretty clear to me that at this point in the game, VGJ Storm have the, the better team fight just because some of their heroes come online a little bit faster, especially this Weaver. He's like on one of the most powerful points you can have with a Weaver when you don't have those heavy lockdown nuke stuns to be able to catch it out. Yeah, the other thing too is they don't really have a true save for the Death Prophet, which I think is one of the hardest things. Like if you reload the Death Prophet out of the fight, the fight's over. You can't like re-engage after the DP has been reloaded somewhere because that the exorcism is probably down by then and you're not winning the, the ensuing engagement, right? So instead of having this lineup that can fight around the DP, they're kind of just trying to either save her or sacrifice when they go for towers. And I think it is. Oh, that relocate is not going to happen Jesus. fast enough. 747 does pick up the godlike spree yeah. off of it. Another great setup there from Francis. He actually was sitting Vendetta on top of the Death Prophet and Spike Carapace, the swarm, when he went to kill creeps. So they're going to be able to get Febby as well off the relocate back. And they can start chipping away at this tower. Yeah, like uh, we were talking about during the draft, the first 15 minutes are going to completely dictate how this game goes. And uh, I think we can safely say that VGJ have a... It's only a 2k gold lead, but the real issue is not in the fact that they have a gold lead. It's the way that Immortals want to play this out. They want to keep running at objectives because that's what their team does. You don't pick an offlane Jakiro and a Death Prophet to not hit towers. Yeah. And going into like this farming game, you're going to try to farm against a Nyx Assassin who potentially has like birds following him around, a Weaver who is very hard for you to kill, almost has Lincolns, and then a Doom, who eventually he's either going to keep building into the team fight or he might eventually get like a Shadow Blade and then split pushing against that lineup just doesn't happen, right? You just right. die if you try to split push. So I guess the, the, the window that Immortals wanted to play the game, it feels like it's already almost gone. I do like what they're changing a little bit. Uh, it, it feels like they're splitting up a little bit more, oh, nice but they are going to get caught. MP, he should be brought down by the Doom here. It's so much damage. Febby's going to come in with the heals, but the tick, tick, tick. It's almost bringing him down the Spirit Siphon. It's going to be enough. He throws the Doom out into Febby. Monkey King will zone back some of these heroes. They're going to try and get to the shrine to keep him alive. Somebody has to pop the shrine for Febby, though, because he's stunned up. They're going to get the Monkey King ultimate out around Dubu. Oh, there's the Ice Path as well, trying to hold some of these heroes. He's going to bounce the Weaver back into it. And they managed to get the Lockdown Sun and actually control the Weaver to bring him down. But it's still a nasty fight that Immortals have to escape from. They've lost two, one of which is a core. Now Febby has to go for the relocate out. He's going to choose to save the Monkey King, as it looks like Ferev. Might be okay underneath this tier 2 tower. Oh, Febby's actually going to TP back in just to make sure Ferev is okay too. As Ferev can start going on the offensive against this Doom. But the Doom's pretty fast. They've already got the relocate back to his original positioning. They all have another TP in. Dubu's going to come in with a charge. Does get stunned up. Managed to hit oh the stun God. though onto the Doom. And they just blow him up. The Spirit goes down. Doom is almost dead though. Monkey King is going to be able to help finish him off with the help of Febby. And it's 747. They desperately need this kill too. He's got a big kill streak. If they could bring him down, it'd be so much gold for one of these cores. And it's going to go to Ferev. The offlane Jakiro is the one to pick up the big bounty. 786 gold for that godlike streak. So it looks like VGJ Storm have overextended themselves and given away quite a hefty prize to Immortals. It's definitely something that Immortals needed. The game kept going in the fashion that it was where they... Right now, they're even... Or no, sorry, one tower ahead, I guess, on, uh, on Immortals. But that's not really where you want to be with this type of draft. You want to have probably the majority of the tier two is dead already. But there's like a, a tier one in the off lane right now. Granted, it's pretty low. There's tier twos in both the mid and the off lane still. There's a lot more work I think that needs to be done. And none of these heroes on the side of Immortals really feel tanky enough to be that front line. Yeah. And that's what you kind of need when you're sieging at this point, especially if the game is relatively close in regards to net worth. You need some hero that can stand in front and take damage. No one can do that on Immortals. Do you think the, the hero that kind of becomes that is Forev's Jakiro? 
I mean, he's he didn't build like a mech or anything, so he doesn't have like that kind of huge sustain, but he is beginning to rack up the armor quite heavily. He's got the Veil of Discord with a four staff, um, but his next item is going to be uh, a Solar Crust. So if he builds that, he'll he'll kind of become that tanky frontliner, right? I eventually, yeah. But it, you know, while they're trying to farm up these core items, objective-based gaming here from BTJ Storm, they're just going straight for the Roche. They they recognize it's already hard enough for them to take a team fight. If we have the Aegis advantage as well, they're basically going to be forced into a split push game that they don't want to play. Because engaging this head-on seems very very difficult, especially with the acquisition of the Agonims on seven four seven. Like he's. He's just, with a Lich armor, he's got the Buckler armor as well, a Medallion, the Solar Crest is going to be done soon. I, I don't really see where the damage is coming from at this point. A Blink Dagger for VGJ Storm to accompany that fresh Aegis pickup, so they're going to have extra initiation now. I, I love it when I see an early Blink Dagger on Nyx Assassin when you don't have that clear source of initiation before. Like, Doom can kind of do it, sure, but he's going for the mech build anyway. So you kind of need that hard, you know, that blink in and hard stun. And that's what Nyx Assassin can do for you if he goes for the blink rather than, you know, the Hand of Midas, Agonims, Ether Lens, like those kind of items. I, I do like the, the Blink Rush this game. I mean, he probably could have fought a Midas, and I wouldn't have faulted him that much for it, but I think the pace of the game dictates that you do want the Blink. Because you, you can go in, one stun basically guarantees a kill because you have three Visage Birds now, and besides Relocate, you know, how else are they going to save that hero? It's just Blink stun, Bird stun, dead, and move on to the next target. So yeah, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's definitely a solid choice in this situation, and, you know, Immortals... They're doing what they can. They're trying to be out on the map, like opposite side of where they see uh, BTJ Storm pushing, just so they can try to delay this Aegis and, and not let them really do anything with it. But to be honest, even if the game stretches out like this, I'm not entirely sure if Immortals are going to scale well enough to feel comfortable taking this game post like, you know, 35, 40 minutes. How do you see this Hand of Midas pick up from, from Ritsu? I'll tell you how I see it. I, I see it as like... They had one on the Visage, all good, experience needed, you get the, the Aghanim Scepter, etc. And then QO picked up a Midas. And for me, I'm looking at this Ritsu and I'm saying, like, we don't lose this game later. So, and we're already winning the game now. I'm down to pick up a Midas and match his farming pace. And they, they just won't be able to beat us late game. It's not like the Monkey King will get those extra items over me if I have this item. Oh, he swapped it, man. He's, he's going oh, for the no. Radiance. Let's go. Radiance Weaver pickup with the Frost Armor from Lich. I guess the, if the Weaver can... is truly that unkillable. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, if he, he is not going to die in this game unless he's playing extremely careless, you know? Like, it's very hard for Immortals to take him down. We are going to see a charge onto the Doom here. It's like Dubu thinks better of it, but yeah, I I think Midas or Radiance, whatever. Like, honestly, to me, past the Lincolns, his itemization is not the most important on his team. But I think that the Radiance plays into the idea that if this game stretches out, split push becomes a very valid option for us because we have a Nyx Assassin, we have a Weaver, we have a Doom that can eventually build into something else if he doesn't want to keep going for the, you know, the five man type of build. And even that hero threatens kill potential. Infernal Blade plus Doom does a, a tremendous amount of damage even with no items. Looks like I uh, misspoke, or I was just completely wrong, rather, I should say. Doom is actually going for the Crimson Buckler. Or, uh, Crimson Guard, excuse me. I, he changed uh, his items, too. He, oh, he had he? the mech. I just yeah, saw Buckler, and I was like, oh, yeah, mech, changed. right? No, you were right. Yeah, you were right. But nice. he, he might have done... I do this sometimes. Oh, hold that thought. Or as might be He does have a four staff, tries to get some distance, but they're just going to keep on running alongside, and there is no saving grace from Immortals. Don't attempt for the relocate. You just let him die and keep on split pushing. Death Prof is going to head top and Monkey King is going to go bottom as long. They're going to stay out there and push those lanes as long as they can. But I'm sure VGJ Storm is just going to go high ground and force them back from their split pushing positions. Yeah, that, that gank was on the tankiest hero on the side of the mortals and they didn't even use a single bird stun. Like that was just Nick stun and he still died. So that goes to show like the, the single target damage output that this 747 Visage currently has, given the, the supporting cast of his team as well. But yeah, I I don't like saying games are just over, but mm. 
I'm, I'm really finding a hard time thinking because who's the playmaker that gets Immortals back into the game? What's the one hero that can like start an engagement, have it be successful? How are they going to get that quick pick? You know, how are they going to push the lanes out? All these questions, and I'm finding very few answers. Yeah, as soon as the momentum stops for Immortals, it's really hard to find a way to start it up again. Because they, I, I think you would have to do some, some really poor positioning or really bad like shot calling within the team fight for VGJ Storm to lose it, right? They would have to like target the wrong heroes at all the right times. Rev is going to be gone out here, relocated back. They do have shrines to play off of. And this is very important for VG State, VGJ Storm to not overextend themselves into those shrines, especially against a Wiss. So there goes that Aegis. I think they've accomplished what they wanted to with that push. They forced a buyback out of Rev and uh, a relocate has been used. But immediately, Immortals, knowing that Aegis timing, are going to push out with a smoke here. Four-man smoke, while QO as the Monkey King is going to show at mid. And see who they can catch out. Now, the Weaver is a potential target with the AoE silence of the Death Prophet. The Lincolns won't protect him, but it does look like they have an idea of what's going on. Ritsu is backed up at the right time. You can see the rest of EGJ Storm are playing on high ground right now. And Flea, he's putting himself out there to kind of scout out the enemy. And he does exactly that. He popped the smoke on an MP, spots him out, and uh, VGJ Storm do dodge that entire response from, uh, from Immortals. They're not really feeling pressured to take the fight. You know, if they don't feel like they're in a good position, why go for it? You know, why put yourself in harm's way when you recognize that Immortals are the ones who need to win the game? They're the ones who need to be pushing like tier 3 and racks right now, ideally. If, if they had kept up their pace in the early game before that first fight at the tier 1 mid happened and they lost a bunch of heroes, I think that it's very plausible that this type of lineup could have already ended the game or at least done enough structural damage to where I don't think BTJ Storm could have recovered, but that would have required, uh, you know, different play, being more careful, not overestimating your potential while you're pushing because I think that's what ended up punishing them the hardest in this game is just overestimating themselves a tiny bit and then BTJ Storm just like haymaker them two times in a row and then they are in this spot. Our Doom with the Pipe Crimson Guard plus the uh, Lich Armor. I I'm feeling like we're going to watch this Monkey King Ultimate in team fights, and it's just not going to do what it normally does. Like, normally Monkey King Ultimate is like the, you have to get out. Like, everybody run as quick as you can because you're going to die underneath that. Oh, nice stun from Flea. They're going to be able to set up the chain for us. A beautiful one, too. Baby's going to be hit by the spike. Oh, Carapace, no. actually, and that's tough oh, to relocate. No. Oh, no. They're just chained to death. VGJ Storm run over to... A buyback already being brought out from Febby. I'm sure one's going to come out from QO as well because I don't think VGJ Storm are going to be stopping this train anytime soon. They're just going to keep running at Immortal's base. And I'm not sure how they're going to be able to get a great fight. Even if Exorcism is popped, how do they really make sure that VGJ Storm don't just back up? That's one yeah. way. Great ice path oh, into the back. charge. That is a beautiful charge as well. Hits him like a bowling ball. And oh. he's going to be able to hit three and sets it up for the Monkey King with the BKB. He'll be able to take out two, catching a couple heroes. Tries to go for the TP out. Manages to stop that one. The Yule Scepter, 747, is also going to go down back over to Stan King, whose TP was stopped earlier. He's going to be left as the cherry on top for MP to pick it up. <laughs> I asked you the question, Draskal. How do they make sure they just don't run away? Once you pop the exorcism, well, apparently a three-man ice path charge is the answer. Not just the charge, too, but also the um, boundless strike hit three as well. It was multiple three-man stuns in a row. <laughs> and to a certain degree, yes, that was very good play from Immortals, but that's also sloppy positioning, right? Yeah. They only have line stuns, if you think about it, because the Spirit Breaker charge is in a straight line, boundless strike is a straight line, ice path is a straight line. Just don't stand in a straight line, and that doesn't happen. And I mean, obviously, it's in this case, it's easier said than done, but straight Jaskal, lines are hard, Ken. Jaskal, this is why I like you as a co-caster, because no one could deliver that line as well as you could. They're going to go on to Kiwo. Gets him with the Infernal Blade. Uh, Ritsu's going to come in from the side with the Fusal Blade, slowing down the retreat. He doesn't have that BKB, and they're actually just going to relocate him out. Almost throughout the ultimate there, and now it's just a catch... See who they can actually grab here. Ritsu's going to go for another Diffuser Blade. This one on Fred. They follow it up with a stun. That's going to be victim number one. Who else is going to be dying to VGJ Storm's push forward? Fred's going to die tanky. eventually. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Those familiars were just doing no damage. And, uh, who, oh, oh, that's right. Febby. He relocated out. So he's going to come right back. 
So that'll be two caught by VGJ Storm's push forward. So unfortunately, no Roshan just yet. So they probably just go high ground anyway, right? They know there's... I think they know there's no buyback from the Wisp, right? Because he did it Yeah, earlier. they're not too deterred by this. Like, the, the yeah. last fight, yeah, it was a bit of a execution mistake. Like, being so clumped up that they let multiple hero stuns land that many times in a row. But this time around, it'll be more of a... Uh, I think a business affair. Just go in here, get the power. Maybe back if you want to play it super safe. Yeah, there's the Monkey King ult, so they're going to buy themselves a little bit of time. This may be enough for the Exorcism to come off cooldown. Could have thwarted that push just by popping the uh, Wukong's command there. If you're, uh, if you're a VGJ Storm, do you ever try and take advantage of that timing? Like right now, you know the Monkey King ultimate is down for a minute. Would you be down to like try and push high ground again and see what happens, or do you think it's better to secure Roshan 100%? Just kind of wait until it's up. Mm, they don't need to pressure themselves on going to high ground right now. I think. I mean, I I feel like their heroes right now are strong enough to do it, but it is also, in my opinion, the riskiest play. Because what happens if you know another one of those three-man charges into multiple hero disables happens and they just die again? You know, they, sure their team is very ahead in terms of what it wants to do right now. But that doesn't mean the game is unlosable. It just means that you need to, to mess up pretty bad. And I think that going high ground gives you the biggest odds of making that mistake. Yeah, I think it's it's really hard to defend successfully and then go for a high ground push yourself, unless it's super late game. But it's very easy for you to be able to have a successful defense and turn it into Roshan, right? And then that Aegis advantage could give you the opportunity to push high ground. So in my opinion, it's just always better if you're VGJ Storm. I completely agree with you. Just Just chill, you know? Don't give them that opportunity. If we do lose that fight, it opens up Roshan for Immortals, and then all of a sudden we could actually lose this game. Yeah, the other uh, way of looking at it too is, are they strong enough to contest Rosh? I mean, they're running at it, but are they going to be able to win this fight? Nice stun. Let's see, I, th I think it's all up to this Monkey King ultimate, and then if they can get any disables on top of it. Dubu's kind of zoning out some heroes right now. Flea's going to push himself forward, kind of make himself a target as they're about to finish up Roshan. He's down to die for the cause, and he might not even because Spike Carapace managed to get him away. Another good Chain Frost going to bounce over. Dubu Holy just dies to that cow. one. Doom finally does go down, but they also take Roshan with the Death Knoll. So they're going to be able to trade a one-for-one, one, but still pick up Aegis and Cheese. Mortals at 32 minutes have used the uh, Exorcism and gained nothing with it. This is looking worse and worse for Mortals. Uh, that was a nice positioning play there from uh, Fully and both uh, the Doom. Just putting themselves on the high ground, realizing that, hey, there's a good chance I die here. But the, the greater good is all that matters. We just need to make sure that the Roshan dies and they don't get themselves into the Rosh pit. You can see how tentative Immortals were to walk down that hill. That's why SB has to make this like suicidal play just so something happens. Because otherwise, all the heroes stand on opposite sides of the map and the Rosh just dies. And then both teams walk away. And now Immortals have pretty much gained nothing. I suppose you could argue that what happened was almost the same, but they showed that they wanted to try to do something. They just felt maybe a little bit too weak to just full out engage that. So Q always picked up a couple items since we talked about him. He's got the Diffusal Blade and he's now working towards the Lincoln Sphere in an attempt to deal with that doom. Whoa, don't cut down the tree. That is the danger of Monkey King plus Wisp. Got to be careful with those tethers and where you end up. They're going to be able to take that tier 3 tower. They are going to make their initiation. Dubu completes that ultimate, knocking him back into the Monkey King ultimate. So Doom is oh, in serious ulti. trouble with the silence. They are going to be able to bring him down. The Chain Frost, though, is still damaging Immortals. So I don't think they feel comfortable pushing themselves out. Oh, an Ice Path actually locks down Ritsu. That's going to be the kill. They bring down life number one of the Weaver. Can they get him again? They don't have the Boundless Strike stun just yet. It's coming up in a second, but won't be able to get him in time. He gets enough distance, but the Ice Path locks onto the Visage. Instead, they're going to be able to get that core. And looks like the Nyx Assassin is going to be caught as well. Managed to get dusted up. Spike Carapace won't save him from death there. Stan King is going to be the last hero to die from VGJ Storm. And that's the epic defense that we needed from Immortals to make this kind of an even game again. I mean, it was unfortunately they didn't get the big Ritsu Weaver kill. That would have been perfect for them. But it's still enough for them to be able to be on the offensive for once. That Monkey King ult was perfect. Like, that's probably, I think, one of the best parts about Monkey King safe lane, outside of the fact that he's just very good generally in 1v1s, is his ultimate just does 
an insane amount of work when you are on the, the defense. I mean, sure, you can walk up the hill like he's doing right now and just pop it down when you're pushing, but going up into high ground when you have all these like close proximity heroes trying to fight into the Wukong's command when he has so many items, it just crushed them. Like, no one could stand in it, no matter how much armor. That Visage has like an AC, a solar crest, and, and 2,000 life, and he just, he was butter. He just died. So, in your opinion, Draskal, how does uh, VGJ Storm approach the next team fight, like the next high ground? Because I'm going to assume they're still going to be able to get the opportunity to push high ground first. I, I don't think they lose a whole lot of control over this game from that one team fight. So, if they push it again, how do you want to see them change things? They might go with a different plan, to be honest. They might adopt more of a split pushy style. Maybe they feel like beating their heads against the middle lane into Wukong's command and exorcism is probably not like the best way to win a game. I think they might want to try to like bait ultimates out somewhere else on the map, like force and engage. You have heroes that provide vision, right? You have this Nyx, get him out on the map, find a pick, then force a buyback or try to bait them into ulting in a suboptimal way. I think that's probably the, the best method of being able to walk to the high ground. I, they've done that twice now and both times they've died. So. I think at this point, it's it's time to look at a new strategy. Yeah, I think um, one of the things for me is I, I like the idea of split pushing, especially since you had the familiars. I guess it's a little difficult to keep them alive against the, the Monkey King because he does have this great line stun. But oh, if he'll one-shot him if, if you're not careful. Yeah. If you can put attention on, on one lane and have Visage with his birds push another one and just chip another one of these tier 3 towers down, like that might be a good way to kind of divvy up the focus of the Immortals crew. And, ooh, flee. <laughs> Almost went for that courier kill. I think it just barely got into the tree. He's going to try and get it here because he does have both a blink dagger and a force staff, so he should make a quick getaway and won't be caught. Doesn't stop yeah, the that, item from they're... being picked up, though. Yeah, I mean, the courier kill is still nice. Yeah. The thing is, they had like a 6k advantage, I want to say, when they were pushing high ground and, and got wiped with the Aegis. Mm -hmm. Now they're only looking at 2k, and that's after the courier kill. So, you know, Immortals are keeping this very close, even though, like, on paper, their lineup felt extremely weak at this stage when BTJ Storm, they probably felt as strong as we saw them, and then walked up to the high ground assuming that they were going to be able to just end the game. And off the back of like two really good stuns the first time, second time they fought in Wukong's command, maybe underestimated the damage output a little bit. And this is now like a, it's a very losable game for them because they've, they've thrown away two opportunities to go high ground in a row. And now they're feeling even scared to get out on the map. Like no one's like pressuring lanes that hard right now, two of which are on their side of the map. So I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, the, the game is still far from over. Yeah, certainly. Do you think the the Monkey King will outcarry Weaver in these team fights? I think the way the fights are happening is more important than looking at like straight up outcarry potential. Mm -hmm. The way that Immortals are winning is that they are walking into the Monkey King ult, right? Because they have to hit the objective. And the more people you put in that ultimate, the better it's going to be. So if you're fighting and MVP, or I just call them MVP, whatever. You know what I mean, Immortals. <laughs> yep. If Immortals are pushing high ground, the Monkey King ult feels a lot weaker to me. So I don't think it's necessarily about the out carry. I think it's just how the fights break out. Defensively, I think Monkey King's fantastic. When he's pushing though, I think his abilities are a little bit more lackluster. Sure, there's a, a lot better opportunities for initiation against a team that's pushing into your high ground than vice versa, right? Yeah, so that, that's it, how I how I see it. In that case, though, there is still a bit of a problem with initiation. Period, right? The, the VGJ Storm don't really have that great initiator. They have a Blink Nix Assassin Impale, which will chalk that up to just being BKB countered. I don't think they're going to stop uh, him. And then the other possibility would be our Doom going in and just straight up dooming the Monkey King. But he's already got Lincoln's, and they don't have a Blink Dagger on Doom, so. It, it seems like the hard initiation is just the biggest problem for VGJ Storm and in their draft, and I can't help but feeling like if they had a, a better hero in that regard, I'm not sure what they could have done. Maybe a, a four position that initiates better rather than a Nyx Assassin or something, like an Earthshaker four position. Then this game would already be over, clean cut, you know, very dry, and we would just have like a 25 minute victory. I do agree with that sentiment of like having a, a stronger initiating hero as the four, but you could also see it as if they hadn't just 
beat their head into the wall <laughs> that was mid lane twice. Think yep. about this, right? What if they farm for just another like eight to ten minutes? And during that time they still have the same advantage and like double it. Then maybe that fight isn't so bad for them, you know. Smoke oh, pops. Nice blink there from Flea. Yeah. Flea is gonna be able to get away. What was that charge on? Oh, they saw Stan King, so it looks like that'll be the pickoff they get instead. As uh, VGJ Storm are quick to abandon poor Stan. So they've got the pick up, but unfortunately Ritsu's already in a position to start beating on that tier 3. So I don't think that Immortal's going to feel comfortable just going straight into high ground. But they might be able to find another pick off, and that could lead to them going high ground. As Dubu has seen our Doom here, is going to bounce it back with Relocate in. And a Silence out. There's going to be no Doom neither the ability nor the hero. Now they're kind of setting up on Ritsu here. They managed to get the ice path. Flea is going to try and protect Ritsu as best as possible and allow him an easy escape, but they do manage to break the Lincolns and get the charge onto Ritsu. So they see everywhere he's going and can follow this one up. The ice path misses, but Dubu, that charge can't miss. He's going to be able to land on top of him. Does have the gem to be able to constantly see him. Oh, and nice with a stun coming oh in for the Monkey God. King with the silence, they'll be able to bring down Ritsu. Was, so Was that I, a Jingu boundless strike or just a regular one? That was 1,600 damage, wasn't it? Or did I read that wrong? I think that was a regular one because he went for the 100 uh, plus 100% boundless strike crit at level oh, 25. Oh, good lord. Yeah, okay. That's so, some damage. And Dubu is just going to go for more. He charges into two. Now his team is not nearly as fast as he is, so he may be in trouble here. He's actually going to have a nuke coming at him from the Visage, and that is going to be enough to finish him off. Uh, ooh, France is very quick to be able to pick up the Blink Dagger and is going to be able to get away with it too. Dubu, you bought your team a huge win. And then just kind of threw it away. I'm not sure if they, they are feeling comfortable doing anything without their Spirit Breaker, especially now that they've lost the gem. Looks like they're just going to control the Roshan pit. And oh, Roshan spawns right as they He's leave the pit. He's the oh double damage. God, this is perfect. This is the freaking dream cap. <laughs> I, I can't even, like, they kill the Weaver. The lanes are pushing in their favor for the most part. I guess bottom is at the tier 2, but whatever. Roshan spawns literally the second they walk into the pit when he has a double damage. I'm pretty sure RNG just loves Immortals right now. It really does. Especially since the Roshan number 2, that one was pretty slow. It was like one of the later Roshans. And I'm sure if you're in DGJ Storm, you just want to get the Roshan as quick as possible on that number 2, but... Mortals. Yeah. I mean, this is a very... It's a very strange game to me because I feel like if VTJ actually played it slower, they would have crushed it. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. they, maybe their overestimation of their position in the game is kind of what brought it to this stage. But if they just played around their split push a little bit more and just got a bigger advantage, I think they would have literally stomped the game. Yeah, I, I can, I can agree with that. Because if they had waited until, like, they tried to go when they just had, like, Diffuse a Blade on Weaver. But what happened if they waited until... I mean, right now, he's only got the Radiance since then, right? He doesn't have that big item. Doom is going to be thrown out onto a BKB'd up Death Prophet. And the initiation is going to come out from Dubu with a follow-up here for the Monkey King. He's going to land his ultimate with the BKB. He's going to go for the Visage first. Brings him down. Now the BKB Doom tries to chase away the Wisp while Ritsu goes for Forever. Forever already down to half HP with a follow-up from the Nyx Assassin. Almost brings him down. It's Stan King's nuke from the Lich is going to be what finished him off. And now they just have to deal with the Monkey King. Try and kite him around. Bring him down with direct damage. And I don't think QO's going to be able to get out of this the second one because he's going to be able to get instant bugged up. Can't really stop and hit the bug, so they'll constantly have vision of him, slow him down. He goes for a TP out. Very optimistic one at that. And finally, we have a fight that isn't so straightforward. That isn't one team running into the other, and VGJ just mop it up. Yeah, the, the skirmishes outside like this, especially since they caught the DP before the exorcism, that was the big thing. Like, sure, Flea missed the stun, but they got the Doom off. No exorcism was cast. BKB was used. He had to run away. Like, MP couldn't do anything about that after the fact. And they engage anyway. So maybe they felt like they were trapped in this position where they had to fight. Now, granted, they do have four buybacks. Uh, I think they might save the DP because she's only got 10 seconds. They might even sacrifice a lane for this. But if they don't buy back on the Monkey King, I think they just lose the base. Monkey King is going to come out first, but he's got to be careful with that TP. Jeez. He does have his BKB back up, though. He's going to lead with the Boundless Strike. They're going to go for the Doom. Dubu's going to be able to get a little bit of charge. Nice use of the Illusion there. Charges through it to bump the Doom back again. Nice. They are going to be able to get that kill for the buyback. That was a team wipe, too. They killed all five heroes. 
So they've, they've gotten themselves back up from a more or less an even game to forcing QO to buy back. They kill him one more time. That could just very well be the end of this. The tier 3 is already dead in the mid lane. Tier 2, or yeah, tier 2 and bottom is still alive, but I'm pretty sure they could just throw him if QO dies again and he doesn't have buyback. It's going to be like 100 plus seconds with him being dead. Yeah. But realizing the situation they're in, looks like Immortals are going to go for the more offensive play. Just walking down the mid lane, going to try to force some action of their own here. Yeah, I would never look at uh, MVP Phoenix, or in this case, Immortals, and expect them to be the ones to wait on their laurels and wait for the enemy team to push when they're in dire circumstances. Seem like the kind of boys who always want to take the, the fate into their own hands, you know? If and you're making the enemy team that. react, you're winning the game. That's like, that's how I always see Dota. If you make them do something they don't want to do, you're winning. Yeah, if you just sat yeah, in your really base, like all that's going to happen is you won't lose. Like, may maybe you'll be able to hold off those pushes, but you're not going to win the game anytime soon. Yeah, I think that's why, like, you and you were stressing the, the importance of having, like, that better initiator. Just because you always want a way to start a fight. No matter if you're winning or losing, you need a way to make the enemy team fight you. And sometimes you're, you're not in a stage where you can do that. And those games always feel bad because you, you can't... Be like, oh, we can just do this, and a fight will break out. If you don't have that form of initiation, or you don't have a way of walking up to a tower and hitting it, the enemy team doesn't have to fight you. And I think that Immortals, in their previous teams, they always just want to fight anyway. They'll always pick heroes that can go in. A five-man smoke, and they're going to go straight through the front door as it's open. They do have no Tier 3 there. A ward laid out, but there is a sentry already in place. Is that... It's actually... I think it's outside of the range. It so, is, yeah. if they had seen that ward, it's obviously the they the would have been ticked yeah. off. But either way, it seems like uh, Immortals pretty understanding of the uh, potential smoke initiation inside the base. So they've just been hugging tier fours. Now this is a very scary time they for Immortals. That Monkey King, they saw him. Yeah, they saw him, and they're gonna start running at him. The familiars could potentially scan him out on top of the trees, but he's away. Nice. <laughs> he is playing a very dangerous game. I was about to say, is that because if he it, dies there, it is game over. In your he mind, is like rascal, is that is that like it. is that hundred gold ever worth it to you to pop your head out of the base? Considering he's not really near an item, I would say no. If he was near like a BKB and he just needed a hundred gold for that BKB, I would say hell yeah, it's worth it because that BKB could change the fight. But the fact of the matter is, he's not close to anything that's game breaking. So. I would say in this instance, it probably wasn't worth it. But he's QO, you know, he's crazy. With Boundless Strike on cooldown, 747 attempts a quick push onto that tier 3 with the Familiars. Gets a little bit more damage. He's going to go for another one here. See if he can actually bring down the tower. And he will. Go for the charge out. He's got fresh Familiars if he wants to, so... A worthy trade. Yep, just gets the resummon. Full map control going the way of E2J Storm. This is kind of the way Dude, that... QO's doing again. Dude, he's... Dude, QO he's can't insane. handle himself. He can't stop himself, man. He can't stop. The BKB is going to go off, though. They managed to stop that one, but he get the Doom on top of the Monkey King. He won't be able to throw out that crucial ultimate, but they do manage to get the Death Prophet ultimate and see if that can allow them to survive through the fight. Anyway, Monkey King's going to be slowed down. A little bit more of a heal as Febby tries to get to the Shrine. They're going to be able to keep him alive a bit longer. Ritsu's gunning for him with the BKB up Weaver, but they just can't do the damage necessary. The heals are too much, and now it's going to be... Uh, it, Beach J, who are the ones on the back foot, is they're going to get run over. Their Doom's already gone. Stan King's going to fall as well. And the Monkey King, back up to full health, full mana, pursues for more, but won't be able to find any more members of VGJ. They've already ran themselves away. They've already made a full retreat. What a disaster. That could have been such a beautiful initiation to get the kill onto the Monkey King to start things off, and they, they could have just gone high ground from there. But Yeah, that was... It looked like they were going to be able to kill the Monkey King just straight up. He got the BKB before the Doom landed, so he wasn't able to get like the bonus damage from like the Infernal Blade and whatnot. Side the Vice on Queen. for Rev. Flea. Flea is also stopping up the Death Prophet as long as possible. Febby's going to be able to get away with the Ghost Scepter. 
Now Ritsu goes to pursue, not actually on him, goes for NP instead. Yule Scepter going to be used, stopping NP in one place. That may have been a little bit of a mistake from him. Now he's just going to be food for the Weaver. His movement speed is actually allowing him to get away from this one. And Ritsu can't pursue. He's going to be hit by the Boundless Strike. Follow up with the Ice Path. They might be able to lock him down long enough because now the shikuchi has gone. And one hit, and that's all it takes. Kiwo brings down Ritsu's Weaver. And what was... An interesting little skirmish that looked like it was going to be the favor of VGJ with all those heroes so low, but QO, the Monkey King, comes in and just cleans up two cores, and now they're going to be the ones to force buybacks. Dude, QO god, that Boundless Strike just killed him straight up. Yule there Scepter. wasn't a sentry there either. Did Catching Stan down. King, follow with the Ice Path. Oh, he's <laughs> gone! And now the Doom is going to have some trouble. He's going to be able to give away the Jingo Mastery. Monkey King gets off the ultimate. That's huge. Visage is surrounded. They're going to go for the Weaver first, though. Locked him down inside the Ice Path. Follow up. Flea tries to give him a little distance. BKB activated. He manages to get oh, out, no. and Monkey King dies inside of his own ultimate. As a result, Weaver's going to chase down forever. Has no mana and no getaway. So, no buyback from the Monkey King. They tried to force buybacks out, but get caught in the process. VGJ now have the opportunity to end this game with the Monkey King down for 100 seconds. Man, Kuro is really going to be kicking himself for using the Boundless Strike on the Lich and not just saving it for another kill. Yeah. Because I think that Ritsu bought back, like, roughly the exact same time that Stan King died. So, like, him buying... If he had Boundless Strike there, the Weaver would have died back. Like, Ritsu just would have been dead 100%. And that would have been, like, two minutes for him off the map. Flea, setting up there on the Ice Path, the Spike Carapace, but they don't really have a way to punish, and they don't want to overextend themselves. That is crucial, as these Ice Paths just keep on nailing. On to three, with the follow-up, Macro Pyre, and it lasts so long, is he at the level 25 extra talent, and now they've got a great setup for the Spirit Siphon. Death Prophet doesn't have the, the uh, Exorcism dealing direct damage just yet. Doom is going to be dropping out to half health. He needs to be able to chase him down, and it looks like MP with his extra movement speed. Spike Carapace, a force that forward. You need to get that last bit of damage onto it, but just can't quite do it, is the damage from the Nixus has too much for him to handle, and he's going to take out from the Doom. Now they've chased out a bit far, and Ritsu's just going for objectives while his team deals with the remaining rabble of Immortals. Another Ice Path. Oh, a great one. Two managed to catch two with a buyback coming in from MP. He goes for the Doom again with the Spirit Siphon. This time he'll bring him down without the Exorcism. Just the last bit of Spirit Siphon damage is enough to be able to, to push back VGJ. They will survive through this push until QO's Monkey King is up. God, dude, I, it feels like the longer this game is going, the better Immortals are playing together as a team. Like going back to killing Ritsu in the middle lane, and then even before that, when VGJ were pushing up middle lane, and they had the Cheese and the Wisp that popped to save the doomed, uh, the doomed Monkey King. I mean, I didn't have the time to talk about it before because there was like fight after fight after fight, but that was just, Keeping themselves in the game with this kind of advantage on the side of each of these storm and heroes that I believe that are probably better in most cases and, and fighting these skirmishes. QO. It's very impressive QO. to see Immortals hanging out. QO, you're That's a little a crazy. That's a double damage That's Weaver. That's a BD. And he is going to be able to... Oh, they actually locked him down there with a silence as well as that Ice Path. The Balance Strike follow up. That's 1,200 damage. A little bit more, but no! He gets away with a BKB Shikuchi over the Macro Pyre, just barely in time and flee. <laughs> That's just a jump. Inside the Roshan pit, immediately scouted. And that is going to be a Roshan for Immortals. That is going to be an Aegis for... I'm, I don't think they give it to QO. It's QO. I think they gave it oh, an MP. He, he, made, he made room. He got the cheese instead. Okay, that's weird. I, th I think it's because they have buyback on QO, but they don't have it on MP for this next six minutes. Yeah, but the... I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, like, is DP really that great of an Aegis carry? Yeah, you pop yeah. ulti, you die, it's like, okay, well, I'm coming. I would even give it to Forev, honestly. Like, he's a beast. <laughs> he's got, like, a freaking almost four-second ice path right now. There are five-second BKBs out. This hero in the late game is just destroying. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, you think of Jakiro offlane, and you think of those, like, mid-Jakiros that, like, Complexity or other teams tried to run, where they just, like, run at towers. You don't think of the late-game Jakiro just because that level 25 talent being relatively new to Dota and now being able to catch out Ritsu's Weaver, and they've got him dead rights! Oh, oh no. Ritsu! Wait, he how came long out of the back? base! Four minutes. He came out of the okay, base is... and gets caught. Cap, are they actually going to lose? I think they are. I don't think they have any way. Like, the Death Prophet could repel VGJ, but I don't think the Visage could do the same to Immortals.
You know, this is now on the secondary carry to hold until the primary carry is up. And I just don't think Visage can do that for you. I, I don't think so either. Not given the damage output right now that Immortals have, the lockdown too, like the late game Jakiro, I gotta say, I had my doubts about like the mid game, but as soon as he got level 25, it, it's just the ice paths are ruining them. Four second stun almost, 3.75. It's just disgusting when you do this much damage. You're dead before you get out of the ice path. Oh, they're going to go for the next Assassin here. He's been quite trouble for the Death Prophet. They are going to be able to bring the Death Prophet down. He does have the Ages, but no Exorcism. So that's going to slow down their building damage quite a bit. The Ice Path does manage to catch the Doom underneath the Monkey King Ultimate. The Doom's gone. Double kill for QO, and so are the buildings. Three members down for almost a minute. There is no way that Immortals don't just clean up all this. Never mind, I lied. Nyx Assassin does end up having a buyback. I think he must have just gotten it, either through goal or time. He's going to make his initiation onto two. Gets the mana burn, bringing MP relatively low, but here comes the counter from Immortals. They start running over these heroes. Stanking is going to be the first one to go down. Nyx Assassin is going to be caught before he can get back to the shrine either. And Visage, last one alive, just doesn't have the damage to bring these heroes down. GG is GG. called, and Immortals will take game one. My goodness, this is just very reminiscent of the old MVP, you know? Just making the games exciting when they shouldn't necessarily be that exciting, and then winning when they shouldn't win. Like, I, I this is like everything you want in a Dota game. There's just, I, I don't want to call it like 322. I think that VTJ Storm probably could have won the game if they played it a little bit more slow, and just took their time, got maybe one extra item on Ritsu, and then tried to go for the high ground push, or heck, even just play the full split push game. It takes a lot of commitment for anyone on the side of Immortals to kill you. And they just go down mid, you know, two or three times in a row. They get wiped. They end up giving away a lot. And late game Jakiro, man. And in conjunction with that Monkey King and the DPLT, we thought they didn't have a lot of lockdown. That ice path was more than enough. <laughs> it really was. The number of times that somehow Forev hits three, four heroes, uh, I'm sure VGJ are going to be looking back at this game and kicking themselves for their, their team fight positioning and how they got hit by that over and over and over again, particularly yeah. that one in mid where we, we were both talking about how it just looked like VGJ was just going to roll over Immortals and then they got that one big defense. The first of many, it seems, but that first one yeah, that really a, seemed essential for him. I learned a valuable lesson in this game and how hard it is to push in a Monkey King, as, especially as a position one. Like that, that hero just defends high ground unbelievably well. Yeah. And I think that uh, VCJ are going to be a bit more, I guess, cautious about having these early game leads going forward and making sure that they are fully, like, 100% certain when they can go high ground. All right, guys, that is just game number one of this best of three series between VGJ Storm and Immortals. Please stick around. We'll be back after a short.